So for this video, we're going to take the individual parts and place them on sheets. And then we're going to take our render and also put it on a sheet with an exploded view. I'm going to break up this video into two parts just because I don't want it to be too long or overwhelm you. So let's actually get started right now by going to our home button and clicking on that. So by now you're familiar how to create parts, assemblies, now for the drawing. So the drawing sheet that we have right here is a standard size 24 inches by 36 inches, which is way too large for most printers. So let's actually change that and get that to a manageable size. Going over to the left hand side of the screen, right click over sheet one and edit the sheet. So you'll see that the default size is size D. We need to actually change that to A. So let's click on OK. And although it seems like the title block is a lot bigger, it's actually the same size. All right, so from here, what we have to do is we have to actually put in our view of our parts. Now, I could put the entire assembly in there, but it's really hard to dimension that, and it's better to isolate it through individual parts. So I'm going to go over to the base button right over here and click on that. So I have to actually select the document. So if you recall, I did save a lot of things on my desktop. And in doing so, you can see all the files. I'll organize these later on and put them into a folder. But let's start with the bushing. So there's my bushing that's landed there. And you'll notice I haven't clicked anything. But if I come all the way over to the side here, I get the back view. If I come all the way over to the right side, I get the top view. And then if I come over here, I get an isometric view. So once I'm finished placing those views, and maybe I can even get another isometric view over here. So once I'm finished placing the view, those views, I'm going to right click and click on OK. Now you will notice that everything is wireframe with hidden lines. I prefer to do it this way because it makes dimensioning a lot easier. Um, however, if you did want to actually have colored icons or covered rather graphics, you would actually put in the shaded view over here. So by default, we're right over here under hidden lines. Now also notice that our scale is one to one as indicated right over here. I'll hit cancel though. So that means that when this is printed on a sheet of paper, it's going to be exactly the same size of what it would be in real life. Okay, so we've got that covered. Now we have to actually do the title block. So I'm going to go over to my annotate ribbon. And I'm going to take my text tool. And with the text tool, I'm going to draw a box. Now in all capital letters of your call, your title block must contain your name, the title, the scale, and the date. So let me go ahead and click on OK, and there it is. Now, if you also recall from drafting standards that the title is always slightly larger than all of the other texts combined. So you'll see that the default size is 0 0.120, which is roughly an eighth of an inch or three millimeters. I'm going to actually increase this here to almost a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. So now I'm going to type in pushing in all capital letters and then click on OK. Now the nice thing about this program is it automatically adds a scale for you and of course the date of when this was actually created. So now on to actually adding some dimensions here. On the same annotate ribbon, you'll notice that you actually have a dimension tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit and I want to get the overall length from here to here and just like that. Now also, I'm going to get the thickness of this bushing plate, which is a tenth of an inch. And every time you put in a measurement, you always have edit dimension. You can actually put in notes if you want to. We're just going to click on OK and just kind of go past that. Now you'll notice I also have some uh, diameters of circles that I actually have to get. So I'm going to click on this circle, and you'll notice that you have a little circle with a line through it, which refers to the diameter is 0 0.62 inches. And the next one. And then the last one. For whatever reason, this last one's a little tricky here. So let me just go ahead and there we go. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about rules for dimensioning, especially with mechanical uh, CAD or industrial engineering. So some of the rules seem a little confusing, but after a while you use them, they'll actually make a lot of sense here. So I'm going to go over to annotation guidelines. So it says intermediate or small detail dimension should be placed closest to the view. 
So I've gone ahead actually, and I've created a whole bunch of annotations for another sheet here. As you can see, I've already done this. And I want you to have a look. So that first rule that we're referring to again, where it says intermediate or small dimension should be placed closest to the view. If I'm looking here, you can see that my long dimension is furthest away, but my smaller dimensions are actually closer to in this particular case. Now, another rule that we have to have is we have to try grouping the dimensions length, widths, and heights. Now, I know that's not always possible, but you will notice right over here on this one, you can see I've got the overall width and I've got the overall height. Now, since I can't get the depth, I of course have to do it in a different view right over here. Now, we don't wanna duplicate the dimensions either. So take for example, if I go back into the sheet here, now you'll notice that I have a length from here to here, which is one inch. And I know that the diameter of my circle is also one inch. So what I would not do in that case is I would not dimension here to here because essentially that's already covered right here. Now I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard. So I clear out the dimension um, uh, command and then I'm just going to click on the dimension, hit delete. Remember, you have to make sure you exit out of all commands by hitting escape or ESC on your keyboard to get rid of that. Okay, so the next rule. Try to place dimensions between the views. What that means is if you have various views such as top, front, back, side, whatever that side view might be, you're going to have to sort of split up those dimensions. So you can see I'm using this view, this view, and this view as best as I possibly can. You never ever want to typically dimension off an isometric view. Uh, as sometimes your lines will cross and overlap, and that's kind of a big no-no. Okay, never dimension hidden lines. Now going back into here too, you'll notice that here's a hidden line because I know that there's a hole that cuts all the way across here, but you won't see the actual lines or uh, dimension lines on the hidden lines. You'll see instead of what I've done is I've actually used other views to help sort of locate where the centers of the circles are in that particular case. Never cross a dimension line. This is hard to do sometimes, but you're gonna get used to it and find creative ways of not dimensioning. Now take for example, if I've got my axle here. Now I decided to do the diameter over here, but if I did the width of the cylinder from here to here, these lines would be slightly crossing over each other, which again is a big no-no. We don't wanna have that. Uh, just because what that does is it confuses whether you're actually looking at the actual object itself or the dimension lines. Now locate circles to their centers. This is essentially given radius. By nature, inventor is gonna always find the diameter and that's fine. This is not a necessary rule and it really depends on the program that you're using. Now, leaders, what are leaders? They're basically little arrows and they sometimes contain notes. Um, and what they're saying is a leader should not actually be horizontal or vertical. Let me show you an example of that. So if I go to my um, axle right over here, you can see that I, in fact, I do have a leader right over here. Now you'll notice that it's not vertical, that arrow, or it's not horizontal because in fact, if it is, it's gonna be really confusing and difficult to tell apart from the object. And so that's when you would actually use it at sort of a, an angle. Now I'm gonna actually create another sheet and I'm gonna then place this axle on that view. And in doing so, I'm gonna show you how to use the leader command. It's very, very easy to use. A little, little quirky at first, but we'll get the hang of it. Okay, so we got our first sheet, our sheet number one, which we have everything completed. So let's go ahead and actually create another sheet. Going back to place views tab, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sheet. And the nice thing is it does remember the size from last time. Now I'm going to let you go ahead and fill out the name as well as the title, but we definitely want a place a, a view on here. So let me just make sure we're clicked on double, uh, double clicked on sheet two. Let's take our base projection here. Again, selecting our file. I'm going to find the axle. And I'm going to go with this view. I'll go with an isometric and I'll also go with a front or top in that case. Again, we're scale one to one, so click on OK, and there it is. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and dimension according to what's in this attached PDF, and you can see how all the notes are supposed to be done. But in terms of adding a leader, pretty simple stuff. Going back into my annotate ribbon, I'm gonna look and find text with leader. And in doing so, I'm gonna go ahead and click 
click, and these are left clicks, right click, and then continue. And so in that case, using the default size of text of 0.120, I will write out that in fact this is a chamfer of 45 degrees. Remember all capital letters, chamfer, 0.125 inches in size, times 45, whoops, we'll just use a little x in that case. And then we're going to click on OK. Now sometimes you need to move these things around and that's fine. To move it around, again, you'll notice that I'm actually in a particular tool, so I'm going to have to hit Escape to exit out so it's no longer selected. Only then when no tools are selected, I, hit, I can actually grab something and I can just move it across. So I do have these little grips and you can see it turns into a little move icon and I can move that back and forth as I need to. And if I want to change the direction of the lines, you can see I can also grab another grip here or grab a grip here. Perfect. So once I've done that, I can hit escape. Again, it's going to be up to you to look at the original PDF document with all the measurements and put them in there. Uh, and complete this particular sheet, complete with your name and title block. Okay, so going back into our annotation guide. Now, what we want to do is avoid placing dimensions in the view, or the actual object is the best way of describing that. So going back over to my wheel assembly here, you'll really notice that I've got lots of measurements over here, and None of the measurements are actually inside of the diagram themselves. Yes, I know this one kind of crosses over to the diagram, but we can see that it's not part of the diagram because the line's a little bit lighter, not as dark and thick. And you can also see that the uh, dimension lines are not touching the object as well too. I prefer not to put this measurement right over here, but I didn't have any choice because I pretty much ran out of space. And certainly I don't want to put it on my isometric view as it's just going to be a little bit confusing that, at that point. Um, and so with that, stay clear always of putting your dimensions actually on the object and you'll see each of these are always outside of that actual object itself. Okay, avoid, avoid long extension lines. That one is pretty easy. Um, if I have a look at my first sheet here, what I don't want to do, and again hit escape, make sure no command selected, I don't want to have the zipping up all the way that, that far. It's just too far and it just doesn't make any sense as to why you'd have it that far. Um, you also want to stack dimensions on top of each other uh, in the sense that if one dimension is at the same level as another, you try lining them up so you can see that this is lined up with this, this is lined up with this. And the only reason why I didn't line up this dimension over here is because it would have been sort of crossing over because I know it's getting a bit messy. In fact, I probably could have done away with a couple measurements and then let you know the person who's interpreting these drawings do a little bit of mental math to figure out what dimensions are actually missing in that case. Okay, so number 11, circular end parts are dimension center to center. We've already covered that one. Uh, we are doing diameters, not radiuses, and that's fine too. Now, holes are dimension with liters and cylinders are dimension with a uh, dimension line. So let's actually go ahead and look at the cylinders here. If you recall, when I ended up actually doing the diameter of, um, say, a circle, you'll notice that it has a liter attached to it. And in that case, when I actually dimension that circle, and I'll just do it right over here, you can see how it automatically adds that liter, which is great. Okay, so what you should be doing is creating a total of five sheets. So if you recall, you're going to go ahead and hit the new sheet button. Now, four of those sheets are gonna contain each individual parts. And the fifth one, we're gonna do an exploded assembly with a parts list and some brief descriptions. And in doing that, you're gonna try breaking this down so it's gonna be very easy for somebody to interpret it and see how it's all kind of tying together. Again, you're going for manufacturing specs. Can this actually be built in a way that makes sense? Be sure to follow the enclosed PDF and don't forget to finish out the title blocks for each of the sheets. Before I end this particular video, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a quick save on this. And I'm gonna call this one here. Assembly underscore 
sheet. And you'll notice that's in DWG format, so different than the other ones. Okay, so give that a try. And then we have one final video, and that video, like I said, is going to be exploded views. Thanks for watching.